In this video, I will give you an overview of your EPP hub and explain how you can meet your EPP requirement. You can access your EPP hub uh, via a student hub through your dashboard. So if you click here and go to dashboard, you will be able to find your EPP hub just on this list here. You can also access your EPP hub via the EPP website. So your EPP hub is your one-stop shop for everything EPP. This is where you can find information on what is required to complete your EPP, including mandatory and optional components, how to claim your EPP hours, how to submit your reflections, how to submit your completed EPP for approval and submission deadlines. Looking at your EPP hub and reading the information in each section is a good starting point for understanding and planning how you will meet your EPP requirement. Please note that depending on when you started your program, your EPP hub might look slightly different. Students who started their engineering program before 2025 will access the EPP hub transition workflow, while students who started their program from 2025 onwards will access the standard EPP hub. There will be slightly different mandatory and optional requirements depending on when you started your engineering degree and EPP rules that, you, that were in place when you commenced. So when you first open your EPP hub, you will notice that there is a dial on the number of mandatory components completed tab. This dial will turn green once you have met the minimum requirements of each mandatory EPP component in your EPP hub. You can also use this dial to track how many of the mandatory components you have completed so far. Similarly, when you start claiming your hours, a dial in place of the gray arrows next to each component will indicate how many hours you have already claimed towards that component. Once you meet the minimum requirement for each component, this dial will turn green. Note that you will need to exceed the minimum hours requirement for some components to meet the 430 hours of EPP. Now let's have a look at how you can claim the EPP hours for your industry placement. Um, please note that you can only claim the EPP hours if the placement is approved in InPlace, has finished, and both you and your supervisor have submitted the placement verification survey. You can find information and another instructional video on how to submit your placement for approval via InPlace on the EPP website. So if you scroll down a bit here under components of EPP, around the middle you will find the industry placement tab. So if you click on it, it will expand where you can find information uh, about the industry placement and how you can claim it. Then you will have to click on the industry placement completed during UQ studies tab. And then during UQ industry placement form, and you can access the form on this link here. So once you click on it, the industry placement came, claim form will open. Obviously, you won't see this uh, admin section, but you will see the placement details. Here, you will have to provide the placement details. Um, all of these fields are required, as you can see. Uh, but most importantly, you have to make sure that all of these details match uh, the details, the placement details provided in, in place and that, and that your supervisor's uh, details are correct. Um, you will also have to attach evidence that your uh, placement uh, is approved in InPlace and your supervisor completed the in place, uh, the placement verification pla uh, survey in InPlace. Um, so you can take a screenshot of your completed placement record and upload that here. Once you've completed all of the fields, you can submit this form um, to your EPP hub. You can claim your EPP hours for the other components by submitting similar forms under each relevant tab. And you are also required to submit four reflections on your industry experience. This component will actually only open once you've submitted at least 225 hours under the industry placement. You will have to submit your reflections via Blackboard and then confirm in your EPP hub under this tab that you have submitted them. It's important to note that EPP claims in your EPP hub won't be assessed by EAT employability after each submission. 
Instead, you will have to submit your EPP hub for approval via the completion declaration after completing requirements tab once you have met all EPP requirements that are compulsory. EAT employability will then assess your claims and if you indeed met all requirements. If there are any issues with your submission, then you will be provided feedback via email. Please note that if you have submitted your EPP Hub for approval before you receive a pass grade on your reflections, then the approval of your EPP Hub will be provisional, subject to your reflections passing.